Uh, yeah, I'd like to. I, I, there's a couple artists that I, I want to highlight. Uh, the first of which is um, the political cartoonist known as Bronco. Mm. Mm. Bronco. Strong entry. Like you know, Branco, or I, I don't know. It's like Bronco. He, uh, you know, he uh, he has cartoons uh, at, a, uh, he, at a place called Comically Incorrect. Oh, AF Bronco this guy's a cartoons. Cad, dude. No and, holes um, are barred there. Friend. Yeah, that's and, right. And like you know, he's he, I, I see Bronco's is, is I think he's syndicated a lot on like uh, right wing blogs. I, I, I see yep. his I see his work crop up there. And again, like he has a. He has a style where they're like, this is the, the traditional editorial cartoon where it's like a single panel and like a ton of things that are labeled. But he, what I think is interesting about Bronco is his complete inability to caricature caricature his targets of his political satire or whatever because it's just like mm -hmm. the inability to like capture in a pithy way his, his opponent or, or the person he's, he's tilting at. It's just, they, they just... Not only do they not look like the person that they're trying to portray, it doesn't really capture anything at all about their personality or whatever. Like, for instance, you know, here's one of uh, <laughs> this, this one. It just goes so bad. And this is uh, terrible. This one just says, "Where is Obama's manhood?" And it's a cartoon that portrays Obama and Michelle. And then Obama has his hand out, and Michelle is like reaching into her purse, like, presumably to like get her get 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 his nuts. And, and he goes, just till after the Ukraine crisis, and Michelle is looking very sternly at him and reaching into a handbag that's labeled Michelle. And what I, <laughs> what I want to note about this is that, okay, like, they do the classic thing of doing Obama with the really big ears, but he also has, like, a pot belly, which is funny because Obama isn't fat. He, you know, like, he was a pretty slender guy. Yeah. And also, they're really into drawing Michelle Obama as fat and having, like, they, they're obsessed well, with and manly. Arms. I mean, she's yeah. got these giant arms there. And, and they me, always yeah. are implying that she's a guy. <laughs> All of the Michelle Obama caricatures from right-wing <laughs> cartoons are that she's a dude. That's the implication. And, and the other thing is, like, they're... With, with the right-wing uh, uh, cartoonist portrayal of Obama, some of them, like, the, I think Michael Ramirez is another one who goes completely in the opposite direction and just portrays Obama sort of, like, as a stick figure, kind of like a stick insect-looking creature with just giant ears. And I think some of them go fully in the opposite direction because the temptation is always to just portray any black person as sort of ape-like yeah. or sort of simian in their features. Mm -hmm. The uh, former New York Post editorial cartoonist, Sean Delanis, was actually had to be let go because uh, right it was the same week that uh, that chimp in Connecticut went insane and ripped yes, that yeah, woman's yeah, face yeah. off. Classic and was, apes and, went, and was and was shot by the police. I think it was the same week as Obama's like stimulus package, and the the, the cartoon was two police officers shot dead a chimp, but the chimp was like labeled Obama's stimulus or yeah, something. I remember that, and uh, it was just a little too little too close for comfort, for, even for the New York Post. All right, moving on. I, I want to talk about uh, now uh, Ben Garrison. Ben Garrison ben is, you know how we say a lot going on? Probably the most going on ever is Ben Garrison. Ben Garrison story. is a little bit different than these other guys in that I think he's like a slightly better artist. Like he's pretty good at like his lines and like what he's portraying is more uh, complicated than the normal editorial cartoonist. Yeah. But it's like... What's funny about Garrison, particularly in his portrayal of Donald Trump, is not that it's am amateurishly drawn. It's just his mentally projected image of Donald Trump who is hell, so hilarious. Hello, handsome. <laughs> because he always, he, it's like he's this muscle man. Yeah, he's like a, a chisel shaped jaw. Adonis with a giant flowing mane of hair. Giant flowing mane of hair, not some ridiculous comb over yeah. slash wig. He's I mean, not like, perfectly fucking rectangular. <laughs> Like the real Trump is. <laughs> yeah. He's not a perfect cube of gelatinous oh, fat. Oh, you, you know what Trump looks like? The uh, energy shields from Dune. <laughs> I, okay, um, that's good. Uh, Watch the movie, it. please. Uh, but what I like about Ben Garrison is that, like, he what he does is he takes the normal editorial cartoon thing of, like, labeling everything, like a... A guy will be like pulling a like it'll be like Obama pulling a big a big weight, and the weight will just be labeled like the debt or something, and he'll be like, "Why can't our economy take off?" And it's like just says, you know, uh, the minimum wage or something is holding mm -hmm. it down. Bronco does that, but like 
he oh he's very generous and he that he provides such a wealth of information and characters in each one of his his panels they're yeah, fun they're, 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 everything, everything has to be labeled which they're i kind of like because it's 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 not a conventional political cartoon it's so busy it's like a like a big like where's waldo illustration yeah, it's almost like it's like kind of like an optical illusion almost. There's yeah, so much like going you on. You're sure you're missing it. something. If yeah. you stare at it long enough, uh, Trump's dick pops out. In three <laughs> I, I just they make Trump into John Bastow. That's the fucking best thing. Like a man notorious for being fat. Just look at Trump's head. Look at his Trump's chiseled jawline. Trump's jawline, there are no sharp lines to it. It doesn't begin or end anywhere. He just has like a fat sack of custard around his head. But in this one where he's driving. I want to describe this one. This is a, it says Trump Ranch. And uh, Trump is driving a, a giant Cadillac with like steer horns on the front with a big T. And the license plate says Made in America. And it's a convertible. And Trump has a big 10-gallon hat on that says MAGA. And what he's doing is that he's driving through like a big mud puddle that's splashing onto a figure, uh, like a, a, a figure that's supposed to represent journalism. That's just a uh, like a a body with a with a CNN television, a, a television head, and a yeah. CNN logo. And the the media, CNN, is saying you're all hat and no ka, and then splash. And Trump says. More cattle. Okay. And on the other side of the road, what I think is interesting <laughs> is all the cattle at the Trump ranch, which are labeled as jobs, TPP canceled, better trade deals, wall, SCOTUS. And what I like about this is that it implies that he's going to get out of his car and slaughter all of them. <laughs> they're yeah, all just going to yeah. get a bolt in their head as soon as he no, uh, notably gets out the of his cows Trump are, Cadillac. The cows are smiling here. Yeah. Well, they want to die. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> as we all do, in, we all want to be killed by our blessed Lord God Emperor Trump. These are like the, the Garrison in the same way. What, what what Da Vinci was to the Renaissance, I think that Garrison kind of is to Geo Hell. You know, our current period. And uh, Garrison also, um, I also like him because not only does he portray uh, the villains, you know, the the Nancy Pelosi's, the Bernie Sanders, the Barack Obamas, the the campus PC leftists. Uh, he also portrays the heroes of the alt-right and, and the MAGA people in that he has loving portrayals not just of Trump, but also of people like uh, Stefan Molyneux, Milo. Uh, does he ever draw on Cernovich? Oh, yes. He, oh, yes. he draws yeah. Cernovich all the time. The, so, in the yeah. uh, Safe Space cartoon. <laughs> yeah, the Safe Space cartoon is really good. Uh, can we pull up the one where uh, it's I'm, I'm, asteroids coming down on dinosaurs? Yeah, the asteroids are like PJW. I'm looking through it now. Ooh, I haven't even seen half of these. I think this is oh cool. Yeah, it's Steve Bannon. Oh, this one's cool. This one's uh, this one held up great. Uh, release the Bannon, and it's a, a gigantic Steve Bannon, the Chthonian monster. It's a take on release the Kraken. Yes, but it's but it's that Bannon. Sounds nothing alike. And he's got these uh, uh, octopus arms, and is uh, you know choking. Looking out, uh, Mitch McConnell, Paul Ryan, uh, uh, holding Hillary, and the Hillary one is labeled cankles. I gotta say, <laughs> that is that is the, his most accurate uh, representation. That is very Bannon esque. Yeah, like, just the grotesque kind of Cthulhu look. I think it's funny that he's he's portraying Bannon as an octopus. Like with the octopus is usually the, a, a trope of you know sort of right wing populist anti semitism, yes. and Bannon is certainly represents. The that in our that. culture, so maybe it is accurate. Uh, oh, and this one, this one's uh, fantastic. Just for the, uh, just for the, the, the Lovecraftian themes of it. It's the one where Trump has a, a, a like a septic vehicle called Trump's draining service, and he's something to drain the swamp. And uh, there's a, a massive green sort of a monster. swamp thing. Yeah, the cyclopean creature labeled the Deep State CIA, demanding, "What do you think you're doing?" And uh, swimming around the swamp are uh, Hillary and Obama. And uh, there's John Podesta as an octopus holding uh, satanic symbols and a piece of pizza. <laughs> Very cool. <laughs> we should get him to do our next poster, frankly. We should get him to do our book jacket. Yeah. Uh I legitimately like his art a lot. Like, it, I think he has a very interesting style. I think he like draws. He's people. better at, at capturing the likenesses of the. I mean, obviously, his portrayal of Trump is absurd, but he is better at capturing the likenesses of of these various figures. Wait, he definitely he definitely has the, the hottest the, Trump. The safe space one, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where like Stefan Molyneux yeah, is arm wrestling somebody, and his yeah, 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 bicep yeah, yeah, yeah. says logic, oh, and his tricep says reason. 
I, I just I love the idea of somebody being that infatuated with the with the mental powers of a sixty-year-old oh, psychotic in Canada. In the short term, I found this one. Uh, oh, yep, this, this one's is a, this awesome. This is a great dude. one. It's uh, awesome. Trump, who's Trump's here for no good reason. He's just holding a long print out of paper. Trump has no idea who Stephen uh, Molyneux is. Yeah, it's Stephen Molyneux, and he's holding a another piece of paper called "The Untruth About Donald Trump," and he's popping all of these bubbles of screaming SJWs, oh, yeah. Yeah. saying things like "Trump's a racist," "Trump's a misogynist," and he's popping each one. And the pops, are, uh, his pins are labeled "Logic," "Reason," <laughs> "Evidence," and Stephen is saying. <laughs> Not an argument. <laughs> yeah, this is kind of his catchphrase. Uh, is it really a catchphrase? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah this is catchphrase. What a well, shitty catchphrase. Whenever, whenever, whenever people he wrote a fucking book called uh, "The Argument," you know. uh, and here's the one, Felix, you were talking about. Oh, this one is so good. Okay, so at the center we have Stefan Molyneux, who's sort of like a weird Canadian man who makes videos where he screams and cries and is. Like he thinks that he was tortured as a child because his mom made him wipe his ass or something. It, it, uh, he always just looks like he's broadcasting from a bus station bathroom. <laughs> yeah, he, yeah. He, it's like the Dan Quinn videos where he was in the Starbucks bathroom and then he was like, uh, "Crazy Joe, I'm gonna stew you in your grave." And someone knocks on the door and goes. Uh, are you done in there? And Dan goes, I'm busy. Come back. <laughs> That's Stefan Molyneux. But anyway, he's debating with an Antifa guy whose squiggly, almost fentanyl ravished arm says name calling and it's quivering. And Stefan is saying autistic screeching is not an argument. <laughs> <laughs> and his bicep, Stefan's bicep says logic, reason, evidence on the forearm. And he's like jacked, even though Stefan Molyneux, like anyone who does YouTube for a living, is sort of like a pear shaped. Dullard. <laughs> then we have Gavin McGinnis, you know, fresh off of, you know, really getting at Islam by snowballing with Milo <laughs> and, his, his, and his wife leaving him uh, is shoving a microphone into like, I think it's it looks like kind of like uh, it's like a goatee and long hair. It's uh, a manlet. So I would say, like, uh, Jesus from uh, fucking Big Lebowski. Yeah, he's urinating himself. There's a, yeah. a Molotov cocktail on the ground, <laughs> which he's not using. Yeah, he's like, and, oh, no, not Gavin McGinnis. Uh, uh, then it's <laughs> Kiara. I don't know who the fuck that is. <laughs> looking One at, of those chicks that they all honk off to. Because yeah, she, just she any, Pepe once. any normal-looking woman who's like, uh, the West rocks. They're like, I'll fucking die for you. <laughs> I, uh, Kiara, don't call her. There, there is, there's, there's, there's Mike. There's Mike Cernovich. Oh, he's doing my thing. He's doing what I do. He's protecting a woman. Yeah. Except it's the Statue of Liberty and it says free speech. Yeah, he's saying, I'm here to protect you while uh, cradling the Statue of Liberty who's holding a copy of Gorilla Mindset. <laughs> <laughs> Ah. Oh, this, fuck, this, this is, is great because if we did right wing cartoons as a joke, it would be exactly this. Yeah. This um, is really good, dude. Uh, the, the 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 other thing I'd like to to point out with this one, the the, the other the other figures um, is in in the lower left hand corner. There's there's a a girl, Lauren. I, is that Lauren oh, Southern? Lauren Southern. Lauren Southern. Yeah. Okay, Lauren Southern, and she's wearing a, a hat that says MAGA, and she's saying free speech is a okay. And she's making the, the oh, she's, she's, triggering them. Yeah, she's making the them, okay yeah. gesture, which um, uh, the fucking Shaggy from Scooby Doo is like freaking out about. Uh, also, I want to point out right here: here's a Molotov cocktail on the ground labeled "violence." <laughs> 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 I, Garrison is really good. Garrison's He's a fucking yeah. auteur. Like Garrison, there's a lot. More, there's a lot more uh, to talk about in 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 his work. Yeah, than, because uh, all those other cartoons we talked about, except for Dry Bones, like they all made us kind of depressed because it just sort of uh, kind of boring, kind of boring, and like no <laughs> jokes or there's nothing really visually interesting. But Ben Garrison is like. He's like Kojima. Like, he's created this whole parallel world that's a little more exaggerated than ours, but it's true. It's like you can't deny that when you see a Molotov cocktail, you're like, that's violence. You can't <laughs> deny that when a guy comes on campus and tells uh, the Young Republicans Club not to come, that that's like the Statue <laughs> of Liberty. You cannot deny, and it is all logic, it's all reason, and they're all heroes. <laughs>